Praise Him on the open skies, everything breathing, praising God in the company of all who love the King. I will dance, I will sing, it could be heavenly. Turn the music loud, lift my voice and shout where I am. Mm. Well, hey y'all, welcome to this edition of Ornamentation, today's song is Open Skies, where we're going to be learning vibrato as well as sliding. Those are two techniques that are used a ton in guitar. They're really fun. I'm going to show you how to do that today. And to mention, we're going to do some throwback stuff, some stuff you've learned before, like finger picking, as well as how to read a tab. So go ahead and make sure you print out your tab and chord chart that come with this lesson, and that you've got it beside the video on the screen, or you've printed it out. And uh, we're going to get into this thing. So in order to start playing this song, something that I do and that David Crowder himself does is he tunes to E flat tuning. You might be used to standard tuning. That's all maybe you've ever played, which is E, A, D, G, B, E. But something that he and I love to do because it's so powerful is to tune down each note by a half step. So instead of it being E, A, D, G, B, it will now be E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and E flat. So make sure you got your tuner, turn that sucker on, and I want you to detune all your strings down half a step. Now our tuner displays normally in sharps. Most tuners, that's just their default. They don't have any other option. So you're gonna tune it down to D sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, and D sharp again for your, your high E. So that's the actual note names that your, that your tuner's gonna display. So I'm gonna give you a second to tune down to that. Also, I'll throw in a little plug for the E flat tuning lesson that is in the supplemental lesson section of this website. It'll explain to you about why I and guys like David Crowder tune in E flat. And you might be like, Jairus, but you teach me all these songs in standard tuning. How come you're telling me that on stage you actually tune in E flat? Well, if you wanna know why, go check out that video. But once you're tuned down in E flat, it should sound like this. There we go. E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and E flat. And that's gonna get us to where we can start learning this song. Well, now let me show you how to make vibrato. And vibrato is just this sort of sound where you take a note and you're bending it back and forth, sort of like with your voice where you go, ah, that's vibrato too. And there's different speeds of vibrato. You can do a slow one, you can do a, a quick one, and any speed in between. So let's talk about how to do this. Put your first finger on the third fret of the A string and just pluck that with your thumb. It should sound like this, okay? And to create the vibrato effect, we're actually going to move our whole hand sort of from our wrist. We're gonna, we're gonna move our whole hand like this. It's not just a single finger doing the work. And we, we move our whole hand like that back and forth. That makes it where it's nice and fluid. And we're not going to push up in this case, since we're on the A string, we're, we're just going to pull down and let it return to normal. So just pull down, back to normal. Down, normal, down, normal. And that creates the wavy vibrato effect. Don't pull down and push up. That sort of defeats the purpose. It almost just makes it sound like the same note, just something weird's happening. To make it sound like a true vibrato, nice and clean. You do that, you, and you, you pull your whole hand. You don't just try and do one finger only. You let your whole hand get involved. And that's how you do it. Let's try some other fingers. Try your third finger on the fifth fret. Now, you'll notice that my middle finger, I have recruited it, I call it recruiting, where I, I actually bring in another finger and it, and it sits on the same string. It's still on my A string, so it's not really doing anything. It's not creating a note. My third finger's creating the note on the fifth fret. But my middle finger helps me pull down a little bit. See, that's kind of hard for me with my third finger to do that. That just takes too much. If I put my middle finger in here, it's like double the finger power here, man. They, they couple up. It makes it easier to do the vibrato. Down and up. Slow, medium, fast. Super fast, right? So let that whole hand move. Now, if we are on a string like the B or high E, if we pull down, maybe I can on the B string, but on the high E string, I certainly can. If I pull down the, 
the string falls off the fretboard. So in, in this case, if, if we're playing a string like our B or high E string and we do the vibrato, it's gonna, it, it can potentially fall off the fretboard. So we go upwards with our hand. We still take our wrist and we just, we just push it up like this. So let's go to our like seventh fret on our high E. Put your third finger on there. I'm gonna recruit my middle and first fingers just to sort of rest on the high E string with me. And then I'm just gonna nice and slow, push it up, bring it back to normal. Push it up, bring it back to normal. And I just do that in a nice even wave. And that's a basic vibrato right there. And you can do that on any string in any place. Cool. Well, now let's learn the next technique of how to slide. A slide, here's a slide going up where you go from a lower note to a higher note in pitch, like that. Or a slide where you're going down. It's called sliding down, where you go from a higher to a lower pitch. And you can do just from one fret to the next, up or down, or multiple multiple frets, just like that, or there's all sorts of slides, slides where you're not pressing down very hard, or like you might hear someone go. Something like that. So there's lots of things you can do with slide. You can also combine a slide and vibrato where it's like, you slide the note and then you do vibrato. So the way we do a slide is let's just go to our high E string. Let's, let's slide from the, the third, to the fifth fret on our on our high E, okay? So we just play the third fret, we pluck it, or you can use your thumb or pick, and then you keep the pressure down. Your, your, your thumb is not gonna be pressed down too hard because you do have to slide your hand. So your thumb sort of relaxes, but you, you pull your arm back towards you so that it keeps your the pressure down, and then you keep that pressure down all the way until you land it in the sweet spot real close to the fifth fret right there. So that's called sliding up from our third to fifth fret. So practice that. That sliding up motion, you might find that your finger overshoots it or that it undershoots it. And that's, that's part of practicing is getting it to where it can land in that sweet spot each time. And then practice sliding down from your fifth fret to your third fret and trying to land it just in the right spot, keeping the pressure down so that the note doesn't stop. The pressure doesn't stay down, it'll go and it'll just be gone. You gotta keep that pressure down. Try it on different strings. Try doing a longer slide. Something that I commonly do is starting around like the 12th fret of my low E. I'll just go down like this. That's a very common slide in to playing a chord like you heard me do earlier. You just start way up there and slide down to like, no, like there's not a, just some arbitrary spot here. continue playing. So that's what a slide is. We're gonna combine those two things in our song today. Well, let's look at our tab. We have both a tab and a chord chart, but we're gonna look at our tab first. We've got an intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, and bridge. The intro and verse are pretty much the same thing though, so that's nice. And then I'll, I'll also point out that even though we are in the key of G flat in the song, that's, that's what the original song, that's the key of it, um, we've tuned down to E flat so that we can still use our standard chord shapes, right? So I can play a G chord shape here, but the actual chord ring out is G flat. And so I wanna point out that the chords themselves though that are drawn on here are actually like the standard chord shapes. Instead of writing E flat minor seven, which it technically is that very first chord of the intro, uh, it's still just written as E minor seven to help help you just to think in those standard chord shapes, okay? So it should be D flat, that's technically what it is, but I've just written D, so that you can think, oh, I'm just playing a D chord shape. Well, now let's actually begin to play this thing. Let's look at our intro, and I'll mention that, you know, normally when I'm playing this, I keep my pick between my first and middle finger while we're doing the finger picking, so that I can switch to my pick for the chorus. But since we're taking our time learning it, you can just set your pick down for now. Okay, and let me sort of talk you through how we're gonna go through this. I, I want you to realize that the verse is really just four chords that we play over and over and over again. So once you get this first part down, you've pretty much got the whole intro and verse. So already let that sink into your mind. This is just a little pattern we're just re repeating over. It's not a ton of stuff, okay? And we're also, as we play this, you're gonna notice that my fingers 
stay on the same strings. We're using our A and B string to, to create the notes, okay? Now, my, my picking hand, my plucking hand is gonna be plucking like the, the G string as well and some other notes. But as far as what our chording hand is doing, it's really not having to do much. It's very, very simple, okay? So just know that as we're going through it. Well, we're gonna take this uh, measure by measure. So let's look at the first measure. It sounds like this. And that's it. And then we lead into the second measure. So to create these notes, let's go ahead and talk about what our right hand here is doing, okay, as far as the plucking is concerned. Whenever you're doing finger picking, your thumb, I'll remind you, is always doing the bass notes. And then our fingers just sort of line up. So as we're going through strings, they line up like this. And my thumb's gonna be playing the A string. My middle finger plays the D, middle, uh, I'm sorry, my first finger plays the D, my middle finger plays the G, third finger plays the B, and pinky would get the high E, although we're not playing the high E in this. So we're just really gonna be using these four fingers and pinky gets left out. Sorry, sorry buddy. So that's what our plucking hand does. And now let's talk about what our uh, cording hand is going to do. I'm actually gonna take you through the four shapes that we're gonna be using for this verse. So you can already see the basics of what's happening and then it's just all about the fancy stuff with, with our plucking hand here. So the very first chord shape we use is E minor seven. So how do, what does that actually look like? Well, here's how it, how it works. The very first two notes, it goes zero to seven. Go ahead and put your first finger down though on the seventh fret of your A string and pluck that with your thumb. That's what it sounds like. Now you can use your pinky or third finger here. I like to use my pinky. And I'm gonna put my pinky on, you can see a couple beats later, we've got eight on the B string. Put it on eight on the B string and pluck that with either your, you pluck it with your middle or third finger here. Okay, and then pluck those together. Pluck those notes together on the A and B string. That's the E minor seven chord shape we're gonna be using. Notice it works over the E minor seven chord shape. Okay, and then let's go to the next chord shape, D, as we see that happens in the first measure. And right under where it's, we've got the D chord there, we can see that there's a five on the A string. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna be sliding down to five and seven. Okay, so on the same strings, our first finger just slides down to five on the A, and our pinky just widens out a little bit, and it's gonna be on seven on the B string. So the strings didn't change that our fingers were on. We're just sliding to five and seven, and you pluck those, and that is a D chord. Notice that works on a D chord shape. Okay, technically it's D flat, yes, but it's that D chord shape. Okay, let's go to the next chord shape, C. So when we look at our C chord in the second measure, we notice that we've got a three and a five. Uh, those frets are pressed down. So we just slide this chord shape, we just literally slide it down a whole step to three and five. Super simple. Play the notes again, boom, really easy. Okay, we just slid from D down to C, pluck the same strings, and then it's really easy to get to the fourth chord, C add nine. Our first finger does nothing, it stays there. Instead of using our pinky, it comes off, and use your middle finger to play the third fret on the B string. So now we've got double threes here, three on the A and three on the B string. And so let's go ahead and review those four. We do E minor seven, D, C, and C add nine. Okay, and that's what it sounds like, just a nice four chord progression. So take your time, look at those, look at those shapes again, take as much time as you need to go through all four, and then you just switch to your middle finger there. Cool. Well, great, well now let's begin to put it all together with our plucking hand as well. So now we're gonna take it measure by measure, and let's start with the first measure here of our intro. So get your E minor seven chord shape, first finger and pinky down on seven and eight, and we're going to use our thumb, pluck the A string and hammer we're gonna start at zero, open A, and hammer on to seven real quick for one E, beats one E. Okay, so just practice that a few times, get used to that feeling. As soon as we do that, we're gonna be just going beats in a row here, doing 16th notes. As Soon as we do that, we're going to let our first finger touch, right? Let it mute the D string. And then with your first finger, since it lines up right there after your thumb, you're just gonna pluck a muted, D string, and you might be like, why am I plucking a muted note? It's a nice rhythmic sound, like sort of a percussive sound. It gives groove to it, 
Okay, so that's how it's acting in this song here. It's just that rhythmic part. And then as soon as we do that, you can already have your middle and third fingers down on the G and B strings. And then you just pluck them together. They are the same note, just at different octaves. Zero and eight. Notice they're stacked on top of each other. You just pluck them. Pull your fingers out. So that, that's it all together. Practice that. Just hammer, mute, and then pluck together. Take your time on that. Of course, you can pause it if you need it. And once you get it, come back. Now, as soon as we do that, hammer, mute, pluck, we're going to stop the strings. And I just curl my fingers in. I don't move my hand off in any weird direction. It's just real nice and easy. I just My hand's hovering above the strings, and then psh, I just push it down, and it makes that pop sound. It gives us that snare percussive sound. Once we play that, we do the vibrato on the D chord shape. So we just make a nice easy slide to five and seven with the same fingers we were using for the E minor seven shape. We just immediately slide it into position. And then we, we still have our fingers of our plucking hand ready on those strings and we're gonna pluck three strings at one time. Notice we're gonna pluck the A, plus the G, plus the B together like this. And then we've got that little V in parentheses, which means vibrato on the five and seven. So this is our chance to get to use our vibrato technique. And we're gonna be pulling the notes down and just going, whoa, 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 just a nice, easy vibrato, nothing too crazy. And notice we are not doing vibrato on the G string. So make sure your pinky doesn't somehow touch it. Let it ring out, it needs to be able to sustain. But we're just taking, you know, our whole hand here and just moving it just slightly to give it that nice vibrato sound. Okay, so nothing too complicated. Just do a couple, couple of wah wahs on that, and then we let that ring out. And then we're gonna on the fourth beat. Nothing happens till the fourth beat, and we just make the percussion percussion sound again. Okay, and then to finish out the measure, we're gonna transition sort of like a pickup note in the second measure we play zero with our thumb and then that leads us into the second measure so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to play through that four times okay just this first measure to let you play along with it nice and slow one two ready and there it is two three again Two, three, four. Last time. Two, three, four. Good. And that's the first measure. Let's look at the second one. Second measure, what's great is the rhythm is the same. Same rhythm, just playing different chords. That's nice, okay? Makes things simple for our brains. So, we were at five and seven with our fingers, right? And now we're just gonna slide down to our, key, uh, our C chord shape. Super simple. Just slide down to three and five. And then we're basically gonna do what we did with the first measure. We're gonna let our first finger just lift off for a moment. You're gonna hammer, pluck the muted D string, and then together with our middle and third fingers, pluck a zero and five on the G and B strings. So if you got the first measure down, this one should feel really comfy. And you just stop the strings after you do that. And as soon as we do that first stop on the second beat, then we go to our C add nine chord shape where you're not moving your first finger, it stays there. We switch our pinky out for our middle on the B string. And then with the same fingers we used earlier, we pluck the three strings and then do the same kind of vibrato where we're pulling down and just do it a few times. Okay, we still let our G string ring out open. And this is our C add nine chord with vibrato. And then we stop the strings on the fourth beat and play zero with our thumb again to get us into the third measure of our intro. Okay, so that's that. Let's, I'm gonna play through a couple times the second measure just so that you can play along with it. Here we go. Two, ready, and. Two, 
that's the second measure. Well, our third measure of the intro is literally the same thing as the first measure. So there's nothing new to learn. You already know it. So we're going to skip over the third measure and go to the fourth measure. And the fourth measure is where you get to do this cool slide and then a triple pull off. Okay, which is awesome. Okay, it's really fun. And the fourth measure sounds like this. So really fun stuff here with the slide and the pull off. It's really cool. Okay, so the, the beginning of this is the same as the second measure. It's like we've already learned it. We're just doing the, that part is the same. So we know that. So get that C chord shape on three and five and hammer it on, pluck together, stop it. And then where we would be playing C at nine normally, we're gonna do this fun slide to the triple pull off. So what we do is we, you can see on the, on the and beat after the two, we pluck zero, it goes like this. Now, this little symbol where you've got the little line that goes up into the five, that means we're sliding up since the line starts lower and goes higher. That clues us in that we're sliding upwards into five, meaning we start a lower note, go up into five rather than starting up here on our neck and then sliding down into it. The line would have to be the other way. It'd have to start higher and go lower. But this is a slide into five and oftentimes when there's no number, it's sort of just arbitrary. You can pick where you want it. I normally start on the second fret. You could start on the third fret, just as long as it gives you a nice slide sound. You hear enough notes happening, enough pitch change, that it sounds like a good slide. I start at the second fret, you could. Start at the third, you could even do the fourth. But to give enough time, I like to start at the second fret. Okay, and this is a very, very quick slide. It's not a, you can't really take your time with it. And I know, we would love to just mosey along, do this thing real nice and slow. But start off slow, of course, practicing it. But then you gotta get to as soon, like literally as soon as you touch the string, right, with this finger and your thumb, you're already sliding. You could already be sliding as you come into the note, like your finger's literally moving as you pluck it. And that's what mine's doing, because in the real song, it's pretty quick. Listen how quick that is. So the practice is being able to do it quickly and then of course having your finger land in that sweet spot not overshooting it or undershooting it so that it's buzzy but really landing it there so keep up that practice get it to where it sounds nice and quick like that blown again it's like a blip blip it should sound like that blip blown okay so we do that slide then with my middle finger i pluck zero on the g string you see that's the next note zero and then we do our triple pull off notice we pluck it first pull 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 it's three pull offs in a row so i'm literally only plucking the first note so put your pinky on the seventh fret okay of your d string your middle finger will be on five and you've already got to have them down middle finger on five first finger on four if, if for some reason you're feeling like that's a hard spread What's very important is your thumb position, okay? You, sh you can get this. Just make, if your thumb's sideways, it's gonna be really hard. Your thumb has to be sort of in the middle of your hand, going up and down, and then you push that wrist forward and out and away from your guitar. It'll curve your fingers and really give you this big stretch, okay? So if that feels a little uncomfortable, work at it. It'll eventually get there. You do have to build some, some stretch here in that pinky if you're not used to doing this. And as you keep practicing, it'll be easier and easier to get it into that position. So I'm gonna pluck seven, and then I'm gonna pull it off. And since my middle finger's down, it's gonna pull off to five. And then since my first finger's down, I'm gonna pull my middle finger, hear that fourth note ring out, and finally I'm gonna pull my first finger off to zero, and that creates all four notes. Now, this is a big deal. This is a lot of pull-offs. You might not be getting the kind of pressure you need or the pull's just not strong enough and it sounds super quiet or it, it might just be weird to sort of have your fingers work like that in a row. I remember I had to practice this a bunch and it should have a da 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 sound. Da 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 It shouldn't feel like it's skipping. It's just nice and straight. Da 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 da. And I just let my pinky, when it pulls off, I just, I sort of let it come up and out, 
up and out so that it doesn't pluck the other other strings. It just comes off like that. And I sort of use my first finger even to help me mute some of these strings that are below it to make sure they don't ring out. Like my middle finger is also touching this string so it doesn't ring out. Lots of insurance here, right? Lots of muting going on to make sure that if my finger does pluck it, they're not gonna ring out. Okay, so take time to practice that as much as you need. There's just nothing else for it. Make sure your fingers are in those sweet spots. Pull off, make sure your fingers are all down to start with, and then you just go one to the next to the next, and there's your triple pull off. Well, I'm gonna play through this fourth measure a few times, very, very slowly. Okay, slower than the other ones to make sure that you can start trying to play along with it, putting it all together. Okay, so I'm gonna start at that C chord shape here where we're hammering on into it. One, two, and three, and four, and a one, and a two, e, and a three, and a four, e, and a. All right, let's do it again. Two, three, and. All right, last time. Two, three, four. Good, very nice. And that's it. Those are the four measures of the intro. And the cool thing is, is since you've learned the intro, you've also learned the verse because the verse is literally the same thing as the first two measures of the intro. You just keep repeating them. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play through the intro real slow and I'm gonna loop it to give you the feel of what it's like to play that fourth measure and then immediately start over again. I'm gonna take it nice and slow so that you can try and, and put it all together. It's okay, you don't have to get it perfect on this. I just want you to try it and then go ahead and move on to the pre-chorus. One, two, three, four. Now let's learn the pre-chorus. So in the pre-chorus, this is the point where you could still finger pick it or you could switch to your pick. Either one, I'm gonna go ahead and, and keep my pick in between my first and middle fingers here. Okay, and then, uh, and then I'll switch to my pick on the chorus, but you could do either one. Pre-chorus is pretty easy. We've got a G over B chord shape here. So our first finger's on the second fret of the A, and then our third and fourth fingers are on the uh, third frets of the B in high E. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go one E and a two E and three E and four. So that's the timing. One E and a two E and. So we got that little offbeat on the, the zero. is not quite on the, the second downbeat. It's right before, so it's the offbeat. One E and a two E and. And I pluck the double threes together. And I'm using my thumb first finger and I'm actually using my middle. I've sort of slid it down my middle and third finger plucking at the same time. All right, and then after that, we just let those notes sustain. So make sure you got that down. And then while my uh, third and fourth finger are down, I'm gonna move my middle finger to play a actual C add nine. And this is gonna be adding on the 13, okay, is what it's called, because we're gonna do this wild stretch. And this is probably gonna challenge you too, even though it seems like the notes are simple, this is a big, stretch here, okay? And <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, man. You gotta work that stretch there. And the more you do it, the, the further it's gonna be able to spread. You gotta keep that thumb in the middle of your hand, pointed up, wrist pushed out, okay? So we go to the CA9 shape where our middle finger uh, goes to the third fret, but then we're gonna pop up our pinky finger into the fifth fret to allow us to play those frets we see. Three, zero, and then three and five together, those frets. Same with our plucking hand, same strings here. Ah, oh, that's a pretty chord, man. Mm. That's adding on that 13. So if we do it together, it sounds like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four. We just do that again. And then we 
hit our chorus. Okay, so practice that pre-chorus as much as you need, and let's hit the chorus. So if you were finger picking in the pre-chorus, right? That very last C add nine, add 13, that's when we switch to our pick, and that'll let us start into that chorus with the strumming pattern. Chorus sounds like this, nice and simple. One and two and a three and a four and a one and two and a three and four and we just keep repeating that. Down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, down. So the pattern is just one measure and we just repeat that same pattern for the next measure and just keep looping it. Okay, so let's make our chord shapes here and start playing it. Make a standard old G chord shape, middle finger on the third fret of the low E, it's muting the A string and third and fourth fingers are on the third frets of our B and high E right there. Okay, and then the pattern for our G chord shape here is just down, 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 up, down, up. Down, 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 nice and simple. Okay, so that hand just keeps bouncing. Down, 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 up, down, up. And then as soon as we do that last up, we're gonna come down on D sus4. Just take your middle finger off, let your thumb mute the low E now, and first finger is gonna go to the second fret of the G string. Now make sure that your pick, that you're not strumming all six strings. You really wanna aim for just those four strings. And especially, you know, if you hit that D string first and you don't hit the A, it's gonna it's gonna make it feel like D is the bass note, which is what you wanna what you wanna give. Hit that A, it, I think it muddies it. It'd be nicer if this is nice and clear on a D. So, really getting that. So that's that's control right there that you want to work on. Okay, the D sus four arrows underneath it is just down, 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 up. Nice and easy. Down, 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 up. And as soon as we do that, we switch to C a nine, and we just sort of stick those two parts together. So we switch to C a nine. Make sure you're muting your low E as always. Okay. It goes like this, ready, and down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, down. Play that again, two, three, four. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, down. Okay, now I'm gonna put it all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and play through this like four times, okay? Just like we see in the chorus, I'm gonna do it a little slower so you can get the practice down. I'm just gonna keep looping it. One, two, three. Place him on open skies, everything breathing, praising God in the company of all who love the King. Praise him on open skies, everything breathing, praising God in the company of all who love the King. Very nice. And that takes us back into our intro. You just play through the intro once and you play the verse again. And then we hit the chorus and then the chorus takes us into our bridge. So everything is the same, just repeats until our bridge. We do the, we do the, basically the chorus chords again. We just sing alternate lyrics. And then once we've done, uh, done that, then we switch to this cool little part where we're going nice and soft. We do it four times. Pretty simple, we're just doing eighth notes, all down strums. Okay, so what we're doing here, it's C add nine with the, we're flatting the, the 12. And we do that by playing our regular C add nine chord. We're just gonna take our pinky off and replace it with our first finger on the second fret of the high E. Make sure your low E's muted. And that's what it sounds like. It's a beautiful chord. Man. We're gonna play it seven times. Right, and then on the eighth one, we're gonna put our pinky back down. We won't take our first finger off, we'll leave it there. We just put our pinky down, so it goes like this. One and two and three and four and one. And just like that. Let's play it a total of four times. Two, three, and. One and two and three and four, switch back. Three and four, one and two, three and four. And you can actually end on that third beat there to give you the science uh, to lead you into the chorus, or you could go ahead and play through it. It's whatever works for you. Either one's gonna sound great, but I like to end if you're gonna stick to the original recording and have that nice dramatic pause um, to lead you into the chorus, you can end on the third beat.
And that leads you into the chorus, you play it all over again, and then you play the chorus again, but with alternate lyrics, and you actually do it full eight times. And this is just, man, they're just really milking that chorus, that chorus progression, it's great, and changing the lyrics. And then the outro, okay, is just the, prog uh, the chorus progression, you just play it one time only, and we'll just call that the outro. And then the song's over. So those are the parts. So I'm glad you've been able to learn vibrato and then how to slide, keep working on that, landing it in the sweet spot. And of course we put that all together. There was a lot to put together with the finger picking and the vibrato and slides together. But this is a fantastic song. Of course, as I always wanna do is up you to the next level. And that's what this song is gonna allow you to do. So let's go ahead and start practicing it. Well, for this slow practice track, I want you to make sure you got your chord chart. I'm gonna go through it and I'm gonna go through the intro, verse one, pre-chorus, and chorus. And I'm gonna sing, but it's gonna be slow. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Praise him on the open skies, everything breathing, praising God in the company of all who love the King. I will dance, I will sing, it could be heavenly, turn the music loud, lift my voice and shout. Where I am, mm, from where I've been, mm, he's been there with me. He's built a monument, his very people. So let his people see, see, see. And it's so wonderful and just to be here now praise him up open skies everything breathing praising god in the company of all who love the king praise him on the open skies everything Praising God 